Hello and welcome to our short course on the Torso Probe. And this is, uh, this is our black one. We do have the kind of official yellow. These are actually official too. They do meet the specifications. But uh, when we bought these, they were out of the yellow. So we had to go to another manufacturer and, and buy these kind of aftermarket black ones. And I'm not real big fan of the black color, but it works. So you'll see here on our uh, torso probe that there's a little eyelet hook here and the idea is that this is used for pulling and testing our forces when we have flexible bounded openings not our rigid bound so basically this torso probe works in conjunction with our head probe and it's really the first test that you're supposed to do when it comes to the head and torso test, the right, the entrapment test. So basically, this torso probe is designed to replicate the smallest five-year-old's body from the shoulders, right? So basically, if we kind of take a look, this would be up here is what we're looking at. If we put the head, kind of looks like this, right? So you can really do it kind of like this and get a better idea of what that looks like. But bottom line is, this is replicating the shoulders and it's the shoulder width that we're looking at. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this to test whether or not the child's body will pass through a bounded opening. Now, a bounded opening is that fully connected opening. So it is basically a hole that's been punched into something. So if we look at our fish probe, for example, you have a bounded opening here. It's connected on all sides. So if we have a square, all four sides are connected. Triangle, all three sides are connected. Rectangle, parallelogram, all four sides are connected. If it is a circle, then it is a continuous circle. Now, that being said, um, there are some instances where the fish tool will be used in conjunction with the head probe for a partially bounded, rigid opening. And we have to use these in conjunction with each other. And we'll talk about that with our fish probe. But our head probe uh, is used with our torso probe. And again, the idea here is we're going to come up to this opening. And if this is our opening, we're going to go ahead and try and push this through. If it is blocked, so less than the three inches, greater than the nine inches, if this is blocked by the opening, then that's great because the torso will not go through. That means the head will not go through. If the torso passes through that opening, then the head probe must also pass through. So this is our first step. We're going to come up to the opening. It needs to be a bounded opening. If it is a partially bounded opening, then we're going to use our fish tool. So uh, connected on all sides, we find this opening and we're going to try and push this torso probe through. And we're going to use just enough pressure. I mean, it should slide right through or it should be blocked. The torso probe must either get stuck here or up to here. If it passes through the opening, then our head probe must also pass through. If it stops anywhere up to this edge, up to this edge, from here on up, it's a pass. That means that the torso cannot pass through. And you really should test every single opening in your barriers, right? To make sure that they are blocking this from going all the way through. I do find on some brand new playgrounds, there will always potentially be this mismanufactured just it's open just enough, just an eighth of an inch and this thing slides through. And that's a problem because then the torso can go through, the head will get stuck and you have that strangulation hazard. So the real issue is that this is testing for strangulation entrapment hazards. If the torso passes through, but the head doesn't, the head gets caught and they strangle and suffocate and die because they can't get themselves back through the opening. Once they turn or once they panic, they're not able to pull themselves up or they don't have the strength to pull themselves up. So at elevation, these are extremely serious hazards, right? Um, 
this always, the torso always goes into conjunction with our head. So they should pass all the way through, right? If this one passes through and this one gets stuck, that is the entrapment hazard. So it either needs to stop here. Once it passes through, that's a initial fail. So that's the fail of the torso probe. If the head passes, it can clear up the failure. If the head gets stuck, it is a failure as well. Okay, so that's it. These always go together. Boom. And you can start with this test. Start with the torso probe, then the head probe. Torso, head, torso, head. Now, direction, right? It should be in kind of the same line as the uh, opening itself. But generally speaking, as a playground inspector just doing these, I will hit it if it's one of these that is kind of uh, not a uniform rectangle shape. I'll kind of hit it uh, both ways just to make sure. And I even find in our corkscrew spiral climbers that sometimes the top, the very top, there's a little crossbar in there and sometimes it's open enough that this will just go through. And a lot of times the manufacturer will tell me, well, that's not designed. Yes, it is. It's a bound opening and this will go through. And again, you want to line it up. So if it's at an angle, this should be coming in at an angle. You shouldn't, you shouldn't have an angle and then you come in this direction. So we'll look at Joan and Jamie out here testing some spaces, some fully bound rigid openings. And again, these can be used on our fully bound flexible openings. So that's the 3D net climbers. And again, it says that you can, that's what this little eyelet is for, to hook your pull meter, push meter on here and pull it through up to 50 pounds or so. I don't really go by that. If this gets stuck, if I can't just easily push it through, if it gets stuck in there and I got to kind of wiggle it or force it, I will always write it up to look at and see if a little bit of an adjustment can be made to either make this not go through or open it up enough that the head can also go through. Because again, kids panic. Sometimes they don't always do things the way they're supposed to and they get caught in there and supervisors aren't always watching the playground. So I, I err on the side of caution because I would feel terrible if someone lost their life. Torso probe always goes with head probe. They go together. Block, it's a pass. If it goes through, it's a fail. Unless this goes all the way through, then it's a pass again. All right, I hope that helps. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and we'll be happy to 
give those answers to you or give you a call or write you an email. All right, thank you very much and we'll see you uh, again if you want to learn a little bit about the fish probe that's coming up 